Try to feel your jugular vein. And as close as that might feel to you, Allahu Akrabu. Allah is closer. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihi allahu fala mudillalah wa man yudlil fala tajida lahu waliyyam murshida wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna sayyidana wa nabiyyana wa habibana muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh wa safiyyuhu min khalqihi wa khaliluh khayru nabiyyin arsalah arsalahu allahu ila al-alamin bashiran wa nadhira allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala ala sayyidina muhammad Salatan wa salaman daimayni mutalazimayni ila yawmiddin Ayyuhal muslimun Usikum wa nafsi al-mudhnibah Bitaqwa Allah ta'ala Wa qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabihi al-kareem Ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أما بعد Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Him. We seek His help. We ask for His forgiveness for the evils of our own selves and the evils of our actions. Whoever Allah has guided, none can misguide. And whoever Allah has left to go astray, then none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no Lord, no deity worthy of worship, but Allah. And that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah, be conscious of Allah, and speak in an upright manner. If you do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rectify your deeds and will forgive your sins. Anyone who obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed attained utmost success. Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to be in the month of Sha'ban. Ramadan is quickly approaching upon us. For many of us, we've been preparing since Rajab since the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us that beautiful du'a, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban, wa balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, bless us in Rajab and Sha'ban, and allow us to reach Ramadan. I repeat that du'a now. We ask Allah to bless us in what has passed in Rajab, and to bless us of what is remaining in Sha'ban, and allow us all to reach the month of Ramadan. As a preparation for this auspicious month, for this once in a year event, one of the things that you see that is done a lot in this month is what? Dua. We all make loads of dua in this month. And perhaps it's worth a reminder to ourselves about certain important inner dimensions of making dua. Certain important things that we should bring to mind before even opening our mouth to make dua. These things are, they reflect the inner state of God's friends and his prophets. And as such, when combined with emulating the dua that they made, we pray to Allah that we get the results that they achieved. One of those things to start with is before you make dua, you must first remind yourself, what am I about to do? 
I am about to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then maybe you should remind yourself of certain attributes of Allah before opening your mouth. So you should first remind yourself about who you are asking. You are about to ask Al-Alim, the All-Knowing. How will this make a difference to what you're about to say? What you're about to, who you're about to ask knows every single thing. Alima ma kana, alima ma yakunu, alima ma lam yakun, law kana, kayfa yakunu. Allah knows everything that has existed in the past. He knows everything that will exist. He even knows what didn't exist, if it existed, how it would have existed. If you want to really put this into context, I want you to put three situations in mind. Situation number one, you want to ask a sheikh or an alim for advice on a matter. You know that maybe many people have come to the sheikh with similar matters, but your matter is unique. So you go into depth explaining what you need to the sheikh so that the sheikh will really understand what you're requiring from them. Or you want to ask a generous man for something. So you go into certain, you know, the way you ask and the attitude by which you ask is very different in this category to let's say the second category. <clears throat> If you were to ask someone that's very close to you, like your mother, or your father, or your wife, or your husband, someone that really knows you a lot more about something, the way you would ask for that thing is different from the first category of someone who is perhaps a stranger to you. Perhaps you need to explain things because you're speaking to someone that might not know your situation. Now let's ask ourselves the third and the aim that we're hoping to get to, which is the situation of asking the one who knows the matter more than you do. The one who actually knows not just what you're about to ask him, he knows the present, he knows the past, and he knows the future of whatever it is you're asking him. Okay? When you bring to mind the nature and the reality of such a being that you're about to ask, perhaps it would shape the nature of the dua you make. What is an example that we can look at here? We can look at a couple of examples. Number one, when I say the word, the friend of Allah, who comes to mind? Ibrahim al-Khalil, Ibrahim alayhi salam. When Ibrahim alayhi salam was facing certain death, he was about to be catapulted into the fire. Certain death by all logical accounts. Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and asked him, do you have any need? Ibrahim, the friend of Allah, who knows Allah, who has this knowledge that Allah is al-alim. What did he say? He said, from you I don't need anything. Don't forget that angels do not do anything of their own accord. They're actually only sent by Allah. وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ Right? Yet, the friend of Allah says for you, no, I don't want anything from you. And then he said, what about your friend? Ask him. And what did Ibrahim السلام, say? He said, his knowledge of my station, of my situation, suffices me from having to open my mouth and say anything. And what did he say? He didn't just keep quiet, he actually said something. What did he say? Allah is sufficient for us. And what an excellent being to put your trust in. What an excellent caretaker, right, is Allah. At that point, you think Allah didn't hear him? Allah heard him. And Allah responded straight away, right? At that point, Allah said, we said, O oh fire, my friend is coming to you. Be cool and be calm upon Ibrahim. That is how a friend treats another friend. Because he knew who he was asking. He knew Allah's state. He knew Allah. And as such, Allah, he knew that Allah knew his state more than him. 
Another friend or another friend of Allah that we might look at, right? Imam Haddad, he composed a poem, very beautiful poem of dua. He said, قَدْ كَفَانِي عِلْمُ رَبِّي مِنْ سُؤَالِي وَاخْتِيَارِي He said, the knowledge of my Lord suffices me from choosing or asking. Right? قَدْ كَفَانِي عِلْمُ رَبِّي مِنْ سُؤَالِي وَاخْتِيَارِي If he stopped there, you might think, well, but Allah asked us to make dua. He didn't say he wasn't going to make dua. What does the next line say? He said, of course, I know that Allah knows my situation more than I do. So as such, my dua, when I pray to him, and when I break down in front of Allah, it's a witness to my poverty with Allah and to my complete neediness of Allah. So he sees his dua as tahaqqul ubudiyya, as realizing his slavehood to Allah. And what did he say? فَلِهَذَا sirri adu fi yasari wa asari. And because of this secret, I still make dua when things are going easy. And I make dua when things might look difficult. Because he sees his ease and difficulty as the same when it comes to him calling, about, calling upon his Lord. Perhaps how many people might be in what looks like if it's a life of ease, but they're in reality in fitna because of their distance from Allah. And how many people might look as if they're in difficulty, but they're so close to Allah because they keep calling on him. So this friend of Allah, Imam Haddad, he said, فَدُعَائِي وَابْتِهَالِ شَاهِدٌ لِي بِافْتِقَارِ فَلِهَذَا سِرِّ أَدْعُوا فِي يَسَارِ وَعَسَارِ Because of this, I pray when things are difficult or when things are easy. These are the hallmarks of friends of Allah. And we also see in Surah Al-Imran when Allah speaks about the believers. الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَاخْشَوْهُمْ those who people said to them, a great army has gathered against you. Be afraid of them. This was after the battle of Uhud. The Muslims had just faced a very crushing morale blow, right? And yet they were ready to stand up again the next few days and go and meet the people that had been claimed to have gathered against them. But what did Allah tell us that they said? They said, Allah is sufficient for us. And what an excellent person, one to put your trust in. Why am I saying this? If you bring to mind the knowledge of the one you're about to ask, perhaps the adab, the etiquette of how you ask will be different. Another attribute to look at, to bring to mind before opening your mouth, is al qarib Allah is close, right? Allah says in the Quran, "Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qarib." When my servant asks you about me, I am close. You are speaking to a Lord that is close, closer to you than your jugular vein. If you want to know what that is, touch your, try to feel your jugular vein. And as close as that might feel to you, Allahu Akrabu, Allah is closer. That's the one you're about to call. He is closer to you than any organization, than any group of people, right? That's the one you're calling. Another attribute you should remember is he is Al Mujib. He is the one that always responds. That verse that I just quoted, فَإِنِّي قَرِيب What did Allah say afterwards? أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دعان. I answer the call of every single one that supplicates when they call. That's a promise from Allah that He always answers without any ounce of doubt. Another attribute to remind ourselves of he is, he is al-latif. He is very gentle and subtle. 
Many of us don't realize because of our lack of intimacy or lack of just observing, of being in a state of mushahada or muraqaba with Allah. We don't realize when Allah might have answered our dua. We don't realize that sometimes perhaps by very nature of opening your mouth to ask Allah, that is in itself a proof of your faith. Because why would you open your mouth to ask someone you don't believe in? So your very dua itself is a proof that you know you have a Lord that answers. It is said in the hadith that the servants will commit a sin and make forgiveness, commit a sin and ask for tawbah, commit for sin and ask for tawbah. And at the point Allah would say, my servant knows that he has a Lord that forgives. Because why would he make tawbah in the first place if he didn't think Allah forgives? And Allah would say, if ma shi'ta fala ubali, do what you want, I don't mind anymore because you know that you will meet me. So when we think about all of these attributes as a prerequisite before making dua, before opening our mouths, then we know for a fact that we're calling upon a Lord that answers, a Lord that is subtle in his answer, a Lord that is ever, ever present, that is never absent, that is close to us, and that has promised that he will answer everyone who makes dua when they make dua. When these are very clear to us, then open your mouth and ask. And perhaps something else to remember when asking. If you were to ask a friend for help, there is a natural instinct in you to not want to overburden your friend. If you were to ask your friend for money or for a favor, let's say you have a debt of a few thousand pounds, you won't necessarily ask your friend for the whole amount to help you pay back, right? You maybe ask for a bit out of that because you're afraid of overburdening the person you're asking. Well, when you ask Allah, remind yourself that lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi lard. To him belongs everything in the heavens and on earth. Remind yourselves that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said that Allah said, O oh, children of Adam, we're the first of you and the last of you. The mankind of you and the jinn of you were to stand on a plane asking me for whatever you want, right? And were I to give every single one of them what they want, it will not decrease in my kingdom no more than a hand when dipped into an ocean decreases from it. That is the one you're asking. What does that mean? Don't be shy. Don't hold back. Be very bold and courageous in what you ask Allah. Ask Allah for the best. He asked you to ask him, What's Allah min fadlihi? Ask him from his bounties. The fact that you're asking him is a proof of your faith. Ask him dua that if others were to hear, they'd be like, Whoa, that's a lot. Well, you're asking Al Ghani, the one who owns everything. The one who no matter how much you ask, it doesn't decrease in his mulk. It doesn't decrease in his dominion. So don't be shy. Don't hold back. Ask and Allah will give you. Of course, we know Allah in his subtlety. He knows what is best for you. He knows what is good for you. So when you ask as well, don't forget he will answer based on what he knows to be best for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you look at your relationship with him, you on a personal level, how many times have you asked for things in the past that you really thought was good for you and Allah did not give you that thing and then later he gave you something way better and you actually, if you're an introspective person, you thank Allah, thank God he didn't give me that when I asked for it. That's al Alim. That's the one who knows, because when you ask him, he knows your future, right? He knows exactly what's going to happen, so he gives you what is best. How many people have asked for husbands or wives, right? Oh Allah, please let me marry this person, let me... And then later on, Allah chooses someone else for them. And then they realize, oh my God, 
thank God Allah gave me this other person rather than the person I thought was good for me. So remember, Asa and Tuhibbu Shay'an wa huwa sharrul lakum. It may be that you love something and it's bad for you. Wa asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrul lakum. And it may be that you dislike something, but it's good for you. Also remember that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he was in Mecca for 10 years, being oppressed, being challenged. All of it, he, he even had to send some of his companions away as refugees to go and ask for help in another country, right? Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-hearing, all-knowing, with his most beloved, did Allah not listen to him? Of course he did. We know from his seerah that of course Allah answered his prophet at the time that it was most best and most fitting. At the time that he had appointed. And we know that no one ever calls him with this adab and using similar words or whatever Allah inspires your heart with, right? That except that Allah answers. So we have proof from the seerah that Allah answers. He is Al-Mujib, Al-Sami'ah, Al-Qarib. He's the one who answers, the one who hears and responds. And he's the close. So perhaps the next time we start making dua in practice from now till Ramadan comes, we bring to mind these eternal attributes of our Creator. And perhaps with these attributes in our mind, we will be inspired and guided to the right words to use to praise Allah and to ask Him for help. You know, many of us, when we're, for example, and I'll end with this, for some of us, when we're about to do tawbah, when we're about to repent to Allah and we're calling Allah, remind yourself, the person you're calling is the one who knows your heart, is the one who was present at the point where you were committing all those sins, and is the one who you're now asking for his guidance and his help. Which means your sincerity at that point is important. Because you know the person you're speaking to is Al Alim, the one who knows everything. <laughs> Nothing is hidden from Allah, whether it's in the heavens or the earth. Okay? So may Allah make us people who are able to realize His attributes, actualize these traits, and may He inspire our hearts with the dua that he will answer. And may Allah make us people who hear something and take the best of it. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfiruhu innahu wa al-ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhin astafa ayyuhal muslimoon i'lamu anna Allah amarana bi amrin azim bada fihi bi nafsihi wa thanna bil malaikatihi al-qudsi wa thallatha bil mu'minina min jinnihi wal insi وقال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا مجيب الدعوات اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك 
ولا تجعلنا يا مولانا من الغافلين اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها وأنت مولاها اللهم انصر لإخواننا المستضعفين المظلومين في كل مكان خاصة في فلسطين خاصة في غزة يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصرهم بروح القدس اللهم أيدهم بروح القدس اللهم انصرهم يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عنا اللهم عنا على طاعتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم بارك لنا في رجب الشعبان وبلغنا الرمضان اللهم اجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فاتبعون أحسن عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يامر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القرب وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة